All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, sorry, ran into a couple glitches here, but we're going to get started now. Um, I'm Spam. Uh, I am from DC 212, um, which is New York City area. Um, and this presentation is uh, called Remote Presentations, Simple Ways to Dramatically Increase the Quality of Your Talks. Uh, it's uh, almost a little ironic, given this in a VR environment, because uh, a lot of what I am going to talk about is how to increase the quality of your video uh, and also uh, some simple things you can do for audio. The um, uh, reason why I think this is really important now is as we are all holding um, meetups and in general just having any sort of meeting uh, where we're not physically uh, close to each other, um, having a decent audio and video to do your presentation has become much more important. Uh, and a lot of folks are going out and buying all sorts of expensive things to try to make their presentations look better. Um, and I've found that over time, uh, it's really, you can get this down to some fairly low cost, fairly simple things that give you a very professional look. Uh, you don't have to go out and buy all sorts of super duper expensive um, high-end webcams and expensive uh, audio mixing solutions. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do uh, with very simple things uh, that requires a little more effort sometimes, uh, but you can have dramatic results from it. So uh, first thing is uh, when we are looking at this, we're looking for simple solutions, but a lot of times simple doesn't always mean cheap. Um, we're going to try to keep things both simple and cheap. Uh, sometimes, like I said, it may require a little more effort on the you know, initial setup or initial configuration side. Uh, but going to try to keep it both simple and cheap because not everybody has a ton of money to invest in this. So most important thing that you can focus on, I think, when you are trying to improve the quality of your video is not getting a more expensive webcam. It's not going ahead and uh, doing complicated, uh, you know, uh, the green screen effects or anything else behind you. It's focusing on basic lighting. I've seen so many people who get expensive cameras and hook them up in an attempt to go ahead and have a really high quality setup be let down because their lighting is not something that's great. Uh, so when we're doing lighting, what we're trying to do a lot of times is emulate almost the lighting that you get from the actual sun. Uh, if you watch uh, any of the late night uh, talk shows in America over the past few months, as they've been taken out of their um, you know, professional environments and people have had to do stuff at home, uh, at first, you saw people doing things inside, and it was very dark and difficult to make out what was going on. And then you started seeing a lot of these folks going into their backyards, because if you're outside, you can probably notice even if you're taking photos with your own personal smartphone, uh, if you go outside, the even lighting that you're going to get from the actual sun is going to give you a much better result a lot of the time. So what we're going to try to do with lighting is to present very even lighting so that everything that you're looking at is illuminated well um, and in some sense is you know sort of simulating the sun but Certainly inviting and move to something where there's a good separation between you and the background. It's well lit. It looks inviting and it's going to help you uh, communicate better when you're giving a presentation. Um, and even a cheap webcam can have it. So this is uh, this is not me. Um, I'm definitely not this photogenic. Uh, this slide here, this person, this is a, a guy who has a YouTube channel called Indie Mogul. Uh, and this is actually from a video he did on uh, on lighting and production uh, with a cinematographer named Larry Fong who's worked on tons of big budget movies. And they go through how to go from zero dollar effort to five thousand dollars investments and improve the quality. Uh, but a lot of the stuff is very, very simple. You see 
they're everything he has and these two videos uh two screenshots here um this is i believe with the exact same camera um so they're not even improving the quality of the camera but making some simple changes to what's behind him and how he's lit we're able to go from that dark shot to the much more pleasant to look at shot um so looking at here what we have on the left versus the right on the left you see he is uh, seated with a window behind him which is letting in light um, but he himself is very dark um, and that's the thing the first thing i see a lot of folks don't necessarily think about when they're setting up a shot um, we uh, when you're working and you have your desk that you're working at you want to get light so that if you're looking at a piece of paper or anything on your desk it's going to be illuminated so you have the light behind your head um, but when you reverse it, the camera, if it's pointed at the light, um, the way that a camera works is that bright light that's behind you, it's going to view that as the brightest thing and that that should be white. And it's going to bring everything else darker to compensate for that. So if we look at the side on the right, uh, what, ha what has happened there is we've put over some drapes on the window. And that is going to soften the light a little more. And it's going to darken the room, but they've added in additional lighting to compensate for that and provide a much more um, even lighting to everything. And so everything is much more vivid, much more realistic. So I'm going to go to the first thing in terms of lighting. Um, we want to go ahead and get... Uh, some lighting that we're going to use inside of the home because while it's great we can cover the window and we're going to lose some light from that you can compensate a little bit with lamps you may have around but i think if you want to step up your game we can spend a little bit of the money we can get a lot of bang for the buck so the thing that i recommend is getting what's called a soft box if you really want to step up your game uh, the, there's prof tons of professional lighting equipment that you can get that will uh, go ahead and do this uh, in a very professional way. But you can find, here's a model I found on Amazon for under $50. Uh, the brand is called Mount Dog. Um, and it is an LED light with a softbox that's going to give you um, a much more um, a softer light. It's going to spread out. It has like a, like a gel in front of it, a soft fabric that's going to allow it to, to be a, a nice and not harsh, not glary light on you. Uh, and it comes on a stand. So it's everything you need to go. And it's under $50, comes with a remote control, uh, and allows you to go ahead and control the color temperature of the light. So if you're outside, we have one, you know, we're using the sun. The sun is just one color. But inside, if you purchase bulbs for your own home, you may have what uh, in America is referred to as soft white or bright white or daylight. Um, these are all different color temperatures. Depending on what you're setting up, if you're using different color temperatures, you're going to like part of your face may look blue and the other part of your face may look more red. Um, if you just make sure that all of the uh, bulbs that you're using are warm white, um, then you'll, again, be able to have a much more cohesive look to you. Uh, and using a product like this, because it's designed for lighting, allow you to select whichever color temperature you want. Um, so highly recommend this. Uh, you know, if you already have whatever webcam, uh, getting just this will allow you to decide, like, okay, I have my background that looks fine, but my background is appearing a lot lighter than I am. You put this up, focus it on you, and then all, already you're going to get a huge improvement uh, to the quality of your video. Um, but I want to lay out a couple other changes because uh, I've tried to bring this down. I've, uh, I've shared this with a number of folks. Uh, this is a $360 kit. I'm going to go through each of the individual elements. If you want to go all the way and get cinema level results, basically, uh, when you're presenting online, uh, I think this is the cheapest way I've found to get that done. And this assumes that you have nothing today. Um, lighting goes a long way, but if you want to go to the next level where, you know, somebody's watching the video and they're going to be able to see, you know, the pores on your face, uh, this will get you there. Um, so uh, I'm going to not touch on any of these individually. I'm going to just go through as we go through slides and go through each one, why I chose it, what the advantages of it are. 
Um, and then hopefully I think you'll see that if you go with all this, you'll love the results. Uh, so first thing is audio. Um, it, a lot of folks will focus on video and not necessarily think about audio that much. They'll use a built-in mic or a cheap USB microphone. Um, clear video is great and it makes an impact and people can you know, see your eyes and you know, be able to connect. Uh, but clear audio helps you communicate. So I would say one of the first things I would do is make sure you invest in a microphone. The microphone I recommended on the previous slide is the Blue Yeti. Uh, the Blue Yeti looks like what you see on, on this slide. Uh, it is the most common microphone that you will see uh, podcasters using, YouTube celebrities uh, using. Uh, it's Once you know what it looks like, you'll see it everywhere. Uh, and there's a good reason for it. The microphone itself has a lot of options on it without purchasing anything else. If you go with some higher-end microphones, you oftentimes have to purchase additional audio gear to take advantage of it. So while the Blue Yeti may not be the highest-end microphone that you can purchase, the fact that it is a USB microphone that you don't need anything else really to take advantage of it makes it really great for presenters. Um, on it, you have, uh, you see those two dials on the back. Uh, one of them is for adjustable gain. So if you go ahead and you want to make the audio louder because you're placing the microphone further away from you, you'll be able to do that by adjusting the gain. Uh, and you don't need to adjust anything else to do that. If you're too loud, you can adjust the gain down and bring your, um, your audio to an acceptable level. Um, it has adjustable pickup patterns. I won't go into those. If you're interested, you can read up on that on the website. Um, it has a physical mute button, which I think is really useful for folks. <laughs> um, and the, the last thing that it has that I absolutely love uh, is it has an audio output. Somebody said that my voice was breaking up a bit. Possible my connection was uh, stuttering a bit. Is it, uh, somebody give me some feedback if I'm coming through okay now? Uh, yeah, you're good. It was, awesome. Yeah, it was breaking a lot earlier. Awesome. Sorry about that, maybe my connection. Um, so one thing I really, really love about this microphone is it has an audio output on it, so you can get a live mix of your system audio and the audio that the microphone itself is picking up, um, which is uh, it's more of a radio host type of a thing to be able to hear whether you're close, you know, how, how your audio is going to sound to others. Um, Obviously, in certain environments, remote presentations can't necessarily account for things like uh, the internet connection and you know <laughs> intermediary servers. Uh, but other than that, you can know that the audio as it's going out uh, is as you expect. Um, so it's about a hundred bucks. The Yeti, highly, highly recommend it. And since it's a simple USB microphone, it's really easy to hook up, really easy to use, and you just get that headphone output. Uh, Next thing is webcams. So a lot of folks have the uh, Logitech webcams and like the C920 and C922 are, are very popular, although difficult to get these days. Um, but unfortunately, those webcams and the technologies in them are, you know, like eight, ten years old sometimes. There, there haven't been dramatic improvements to the quality of webcams in a number of years. Um, so I, you know, when, when I was setting up my own setup at home, I first tried with an old webcam that was similar to what others were using, and eventually saw that the real way to up my game was going to be to use a DSLR or digital SLR camera. Um, now, the how to use DSLRs is a different thing. Um, you know, sometimes you can go with some very basic settings. Uh, but there's lots of different ways that you can, um, you know, up how the quality of your video in the camera itself has a lot of additional settings that you can configure that you will not be able to do on a webcam. Uh, so I started off with a very expensive SLR, 
um, the uh, the uh, Canon 6D Mark II, uh, which is fantastic but very expensive. Um, what I am using right now is a Canon Rebel T4i, which you can pick up on the used market for between $150, $100 and $150 very frequently these days. Um, so it's the reason you can pick it up for that price is because it's a few years old. It's like, uh, I think, six, maybe even seven years old at this point. But it still has the ability to do 1080p video with a large oh, sensor. I'm really sorry, Spam, but your voice for the last 30 seconds was totally gone. So can you please repeat from the point where you said uh, about T4i? Okay. okay. Apparently, I hope everybody heard your, your audio to me as well, but lost some of the info on the T4i. Um, so with T4i, um, I chose it because it is a few years old, but it still has a lot of great features. The, the image sensor on the T4i is still high quality. You can get a 1080p uh, image capture at 30 frames a second, and it is available for between $100 and $150 on the used market. Um, it is a, uh, it's, it's a little bit cheaper because it's a little older, but the quality that you can get from it is still really, really good. So it's an often overlooked camera. So once we have the camera, we want to go ahead and make sure that we can get that image into our computer because this is designed for taking photos. Uh, with the the way we're going to get it into the computer is going to use the capture card. So if you look up capture cards on the internet, you're going to see everybody talking about the Elgato uh, CamLink 4K. That's the capture card that everybody wants to get. And the Elgato CamLink 4K is fantastic, uh, but it's under 50 bucks, I think. It is sold out everywhere right now. Um, and it may be great, but that's going to be out of reach for a lot of folks. Uh, there are are a number of really cheap video capture cards that have flooded the market recently that have totally decent quality and come in at a ridiculously low cost. If you go on Amazon or on eBay or on a number of other selling platforms and you search for a video capture card and you see one that looks like this with <laughs> no brand name and it has these rounded corners and just the HDMI logo, USB, on one side and HDMI on the other, this thing you can purchase for as low as $15. And I frequently see it for between $15 and $25. And it is a totally, totally decent video capture card that will appear as a normal webcam input on your computer. So I highly recommend this. Um, if you, even if you don't like the Canon Rebel T4i, whatever camera you find, whatever video camera you find, that has an HDMI output, you can hook up to this, and for $15, you can use it. Um, so really, really highly recommend it. Um, when this first came on the market, you saw some, uh, some folks doing reviews, and they were kind of stunned because this thing is just like it's a cheap $15 card. Um, but the quality is decent, uh, and the, uh, the input lag on it is also really, really low and competitive with the CamLink 4K. So it's really fantastic setup that you can get with that. If you want to take your uh, image quality up even further uh, and do some of the fancier uh, things you may see on YouTube frequently, I recommend switching out the normal lens on your SLR, if you're going that route, with a different lens. Um, in this case, I, the one I have selected is for the Canon uh, 24i, uh, it has a EFS mount. And you can find, there's a company called Youngnu, uh, which is selling a 50 millimeter lens available on Amazon and in a bunch of other places. Um, and it will fit the Canon lens mount. So you can literally go on Amazon search for lenses that will fit the T4i because they have a lens search tool and sort it by price and this will show up as the lowest price. And this is a $50 lens 
that is a 50 millimeter and an f-stop of 1.8. So this is not necessarily words that will make sense to everybody, but if you watch a YouTube video and you see you have the person clear and their background is uh, something we're defining as blurry, they're using what's known as depth of field. So they are in focus, but what is behind them is either slightly or totally out of focus. This lens will enable you to do that much better than what came in the box. So we've gone ahead and we've added, by adding all of these elements together, we end up with a full solution. That's the essentially local setup. Sounds like my voice is breaking up again. Apologize for that. Um, so if you see here, I've broken it down again by price. Um, you can mix and match as you go, um, but I think what, you, what we have here is something that can give you a full professional setup um, and at a price point that is going to be just a little bit above some of the uh, webcams that are sold you know, to be a little bit higher end webcams. Those can cost, you know, 200 to 250 dollars on their own. This gives you a very flexible, very professional setup for just a tiny bit more than that. Um, so I highly recommend it <laughs> if you want to if you want to go ahead and have better presentations. I think it is a very worthwhile investment. And if you get none of the audio or video stuff, I totally recommend that you go ahead and at least get the softbox. I know I spoke with a number of teachers who, as they are getting prepared for this coming year, and they know that they're going to be presenting remotely, they've gone ahead and bought the softbox that I have here. Uh, and it's already, you know, it's done leaps and bounds beyond what they were doing previously. Even if they just went with the built-in cam uh, webcam on their laptop, it's improved things. Uh, so one last thing, because I know this has come up uh, in some presentations that I've done and seen others do. Um, when you are um, going ahead and doing a presentation, you may want to go ahead and show off uh, a, you know, a physical piece of hardware or something else. Maybe you're doing lock picking. Uh, there is, uh, you, you can invest, you can use OBS, and there's plenty of tutorials out there on how to use OBS to composite you know, a second camera in, but if you just want to go ahead and use the software that you're already using to do it, if you're using Zoom, as a lot of folks are, uh, if you just go in and select inside of Zoom, share camera, and go to advanced, they have a little share content for the second screen. So you can highlight your video of, let's say, a second webcam that you have pointed at a piece of hardware or at a lock or anything else, and still have your video uh, of your face be able to be seen by folks. Um, so that's it. Thank you so much for uh, for coming. Uh, I, I apologize that it looks like uh, my, my connection may have uh, been not the best and uh, may have affected it somewhat, but thank you so much everybody uh, for coming. Um, and uh, I will, uh, if I have the ability, I will open this up for, uh, for questions.